Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to the channel where I talk about IT, cybersecurity, education, and career things. In this video, I'm going to talk about what exactly it means to work in cloud. But before that, I just want to say, please consider following me on Instagram. I'm trying to make a lot of nice content there and grow that platform as well. It might be interesting to you, um, at least interesting to look at, maybe refresh from this channel. But yeah, back to this content. I actually am making this video in response to a viewer's comment where they say, uh, what exactly does it mean to work in cloud? And it really depends, to be honest. There's like a bunch of different cloud positions, but maybe I'll, I'll just talk about kind of an entry level ish cloud and then I'll, I'll talk about what I do to kind of just give you a sense, I suppose. So like my first exposure to cloud and uh, I won't say most, but a lot of people's kind of first professional exposure to it is probably with like some kind of cloud support engineering or application support in engineering, Azure support engineer, AWS support engineer. Basically what that position entails is it's pretty much like a help desk, except for it's more difficult. So for instance, if you're like a, a cloud support engineer, engineer working for Azure, you're sitting around at your desk, right? And they, they usually make sure you have a lot of monitors because you usually have to do a lot of research. But basically, you you pull your tickets from this ticket queue. Most of the time, it's not people calling you. Usually, it's like it's like a big premier customer like Kaiser Permanente or T-Mobile or, or Costco. You will get the ticket in your queue and the ticket will be, it's not going to be something easy. It's never easy with cloud support engineering. It's always like our whole front end is experiencing like unexpected slowdowns, blah, blah, blah. The memory is like pegged to 100% and the CPU is pegged, but we don't know why. It's usually like something like kind of hard like this, or, you know, they're trying to configure some like crazy network topology or their, you know, their API like isn't working. So their customers can't check out or something. It's usually something like kind of difficult like this. And then usually when you're working cloud support engineering, you have like your own specialization. So if you work in Azure, you maybe you specialize in storage or maybe you specialize in Azure networking or maybe you specialize in Azure App Services, which is like web apps, and you kind of learn your own specialized area. And then the ticket comes in and a lot of time there's like some SLA. So you need to, you know, in initiate a response to the ticket within like an hour or something, depending on where you were. And then usually what happens is you read it and you're like, man, this problem's hard. I don't know how to fix it. Like 90% of the time you won't know how to fix it. So you need to link up with the customer and like gather as much information as possible. If you can like re try to reproduce their environment and reproduce their issue and then you can kind of like figure out like what's wrong from there and then you you'll come up with a, a solution in your head and then you'll deliver the solution to the customer either through email or on phone they'll try to implement it and if it works they'll be like okay it works we're done um or if it like partially works or doesn't maybe you'll like link up on the phone and try to work with them a little bit and a lot of the time in cloud support engineering it's not like only you are responsible to fix you know costco's issue usually it's like kind of you're the point of contact and you need to be technical and kind of see the issue through. But you usually have a team of other smart people and like a lot of resources on your your end to kind of come up with a solution to do it. So it's not like on you. It's kind of like you're the manager of the ticket and you got to be technical and work it. But you have, you know, a whole team and like other stuff at your disposal to kind of like help you fix the issue that they're experiencing. The thing with cloud support engineering, it tends to burn people out because people generally want to have a, a really strong grasp of how to do their job. Like they want to learn their job and be able to do it. But with cloud support engineering, it's not like you you can't learn all of the services. You can't even learn one service like 100%. It's like impossible. So with cloud support engineering, the skill comes, of course, like technical skill around the service that you're supporting, you know, virtual machines or whatever. But your your true skill and ability to be successful kind of comes with your ability to do research and communicate well with the customer because you don't know everything. You, you have to get an issue and you have to be able to like research it and then, you know, take your time to figure it out and deliver a solution like a lot of people get stressed about that because every problem they get they don't know how to do it and that's just how it is that's why cloud support engineering pays a lot you know pays like starting probably like 70k in you know the flyover states seattle you can start like 90 100k or more right it's really really good to do because you learn a lot of stuff you're forced to research and learn a lot of things and then after you finish that job or you want to get a new job you can go be like you know either an escalation engineer and make even more money or you can be cloud transformation consultant or you can be like a solutions engineer
engineer just because your technical skill has gotten like so high when you're doing cloud support engineering. So basically what, what I do, I work in cloud. My job is like a mixture between software engineering, DevOps, cybersecurity, and, and cloud. It's like kind of all mixed together. So basically what I do is my team um, works on and maintains Azure Security Benchmark. It's basically a checklist or a bunch of checklists for things that you can do to secure all of your different services in Azure, essentially. But the problem with that is there's like 600 services and it's not like my team of five can just sit down and be like, okay, we're making 600 checklists and like maintaining them. It's impossible to do, right? So basically we have this platform called DocAssemble. It's like an open source interview platform where you can you can kind of build out interviews in it. And we essentially use that platform to automate the gathering of data from all the different service owners in Azure. So basically you can imagine, just imagine there's 600 services in Azure and imagine there's 600 service owners. We we build out and maintain this platform and then we essentially like give it to them and be like, okay, like fill this thing out so we know how to like secure your services. And then basically they fill it out and then there's like a whole bunch of data and that data needs to be ETL'd essentially like extracted, transformed and then loaded into somewhere else. And then basically like my job is trying to automate a, a decent amount of that. I do a lot of like ETL automation and I do a lot of maintaining of the platform as well, like the actual interview application itself. So for me, like simply put, I just essentially like move data around and like organize it primarily with Python. So I use like a lot of different services in Azure to do this. So for example, I use Azure Data Factory as like a big ETL thing that extracts, transforms and loads data. So maybe I'll extract data from some JSON that one of the service owners filled out. I'll transform it in some way and then I'll load it into Azure Data Explorer, which is kind of like a, um, a, like a document database. Sometimes like maybe the customers want like an Excel spreadsheet from it. So I wrote some Python script to extract the data from that Azure Data Factory and then transform it a little bit to where it makes more sense for the customer and then load it into an Excel spreadsheet and then throw that spreadsheet onto GitHub, uh, which is public, by the way, and you can see it and you, you can see my name probably. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Just interact with like a bunch of different cloud services that like automation platform is, is actually hosted on Azure on like one of their web app platforms. Uh, I'm just like moving stuff around. So it, it kind of depends on like what you're doing. Other people might, they might be doing like cloud transformation strategy. Strategy. So what that means, maybe a company has like all of their stuff like on premise, like on their servers, like in their back room or something. And maybe they want to move all of that to the cloud, right? Because they, they want to get rid of their physical footprint or like whatever the case may be. If you're like a cloud transformation consultant, maybe you're going to help them plan that out. And then maybe you're going to design, you know, what their infrastructure in the cloud is going to look like. You might be like, you might look at their stuff on premise and be like, oh, you have like SQL, blah, 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 all this stuff. Like, okay, I recommend like Azure database for my SQL. I, I recommend recommend, you know, a blob storage account in Azure to like hold all of these, you know, pictures or whatever the case may be. And then you work on, you know, migrating all of that stuff to, to the cloud, essentially the cloud transformation project. Maybe there's a security architect there as well to like, you know, make sure they're implementing right Azure security benchmark or, or something like this. So it just really depends on what you're doing. There's like supporting and transformation. And um, there's just normal people who work in an organization who happen to work in the cloud, like maybe they're software engineers, you know, you have a bunch of line of business applications and they, they just happen to be in the cloud. So maybe maybe 30% of their job is working in the cloud. Hopefully it gives you paints a picture of like what working in the cloud might look like. It just really it really depends on what you're doing. I'm kind of partial to Azure, like just because like I, I learned that on my own and I do that for my job. So if you're interested in working in cloud and you want to be like a cloud support engineer, you could look into getting AZ 900, which is Azure Fundamentals and like AZ 104, I think, which is Azure Sys Admin. And if you're like brand brand new to IT and you just want to work in IT in general or the cloud, um, Actually, the, the course I made with Course Careers on how to get into IT within three months, actually that course leverages the cloud for like every single project because I kind of wanted to make sure everyone has the same experience. Like people have different laptops. So I was like, screw it, let's just make this whole course on the cloud. So um, you'll get some exposure to Azure that way. We use like Azure virtual machines, virtual networks, like storage account, and we set up like a whole ticketing system in, in Azure vir virtual machines. Check that out as well. Um, there's like a, I'll put a link to the course in the description, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And again, follow me on Instagram. And yeah, we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.